Hey guys, Wardrick here with another Orcs Must Die video, but this time we're not doing one of my usual videos. We're going to be doing my first advanced tactics tutorial, going over boom charging. And I'm going to demonstrate it on the fork on warm edge difficulty, just so we have plenty of time to talk. There's a lot of theory behind this one, and it's one of the most advanced tactics in the entire game. I'm no master of it, and I certainly didn't invent it. Both titles for that go to Robotin. He shows up in a lot of these videos, and that's because he's one of the greatest players who works with Die. And this is all we really need. Just gonna set this up ahead of time, but we're gonna come to this in wave two. For now, all we need is one gate and one boom barrel. Now, right now, this boom barrel, like this crossbow, like this wind belt, like this blade staff, and like this vampiric gun, is worth one combo modifier. Let's go over how combos work. Every time something, it can be anything, it can be the slow of the tar, it could be the burn over time of the brimstone, it could be the explosion of the boom barrel, the stun of a crossbow, the right click of the wind belt, it could be the blade beams that we use in our weapon switching, it could be the vampiric gauntlet's left click that you almost never see. It could be anything. On its own it would add one combo modifier, or stack, or point, or whatever you like calling them. I prefer to call them modifiers, because that's just how it makes sense to me. You're modifying the target. And then, when the target dies, all of those combo modifiers are compounded, and the game tells you how many it had on its death, on its being when it died. Each combo modifier only lasts for a certain period of time. I believe this lasts for 4 seconds, this will last, I believe, just as long as they're on it, maybe a second longer. Most things are 2-3 to three seconds. Boom charging is the act of taking these 4, or any combination, or, or anything that can affect a, a boom barrel, and ch literally charging it. Right now, it's not worth one anymore, it's worth two. Right now, it's not worth two anymore, it's worth three. You no, know, granted, it's no longer worth it. it. It only lasts for a split second, or however long the combo modifiers last together. But if you grabbed it, and then you stunned it, and then you right-clicked with your blade staff to launch it, and then you exploded it in the air with the vampiric gauntlets, you'd be adding four combo modifiers to its existing one combo mod, which would basically turn this one boom barrel into an explosion that would cause a times five by itself on any targets in its area. I think it's better to just show you what I'm talking about, so I'm going to try and get a times five on an ogre, or an, or, uh, not an ogre, but on an orc, right here and now, like that. I'll do it again once these guys are dead. Just to show you one more time. Pick it up. When they get ready, drop it, stun it, staff it, and then vampiric gauntlets. It'll explode with a times five. I'm not entirely sure why it was only giving the times fours to the other ones. Like I said, I'm not a master of this. I'm still learning for all intents and purposes, and I totally biffed that. The one thing you have to keep in mind with this is... You have to keep your boom barrel a certain distance. And let's see if I can get a times five on this guy. Nope, only a times three. It's fine. Now... That wasn't exactly the most glorious run, but it showed you what I was talking about, which is Hello, what I think is important here. Embrace your inner dark. I don't even know if that's going to be useful, but it's a force of habit. This time I'm going to show you what happens if you add in a couple basic traps. Right now we've got one, two, and then the five. If you wait until the right moment, 
you can get times sevens with just a boom barrel. And think about that, that's just some tar and some brimstone. Of course, I don't have enough money to get another boom barrel. There we go. Now, those guys weren't affected by the tar or the brimstone, and they all got exploded for fives. It's definitely an art. I just messed that up totally. That's the other problem with boom charging is if an enemy gets too close, they'll get in the way of you picking it up. The wind belt prioritizes enemies. Now there are a couple drawbacks and things we have to be careful of. Traps, even things like a steam trap or a grinder especially, if your boom barrel gets in the radius of that, it'll explode. Which means you can't just walk up to a grinder and do this. You have to be very careful and methodical and plan out how you're going to use your charged barrels to benefit you in some scores. Now let's try and push these guys back quick. Get some sixes. And this is clearly not a high scoring run, this is just a demonstration video. And I shot twice with my crossbow for some reason. But I want to try doing this with nothing but this boom charging tactic. Just to kind of give you an idea of what it's capable of all on its own. Let's add in some mana wounds. Just for you. Let's let these charge all the way. They're kind of slow, but I guess that makes them balanced. Okay, that should be good. Let's stand back here so that we don't accidentally drain them. And we're just gonna wait. And wait, and wait, and wait. Of course, you could go out and clump them together better, but we're just gonna let it be. Okay. Here we go, let's try this again. More sevens, huh? There you go. That was just a quick demonstration on boom charging. And I messed up pretty bad, but you saw what the maximum combo we could have gotten with this loadout, which was a times seven. I brought barricades too, and I think that was just a force of habit. <laughs> 